I think as a Human Rights Commission, what we're doing is making sure that those silent voices of those people whose rights are violated are heard. It's very difficult to talk about these issues in violation of human rights in countries where there is no rule of law. So that's why we, we, are, we are mindful of the need to, to be passionate about your rights, to push the envelope more and more. I think the important point to understand about a national human rights institution is that they are independent of government and they become, in a sense, the conscience of a country. They're there to protect human rights in the countries where they're located. So their role is to investigate human rights abuses, to educate people about what human rights means, and to hold the government to account. The Asia Pacific Forum is a regional human rights organisation. We consist of national human rights institutions from all corners of our region. So our vision is to ensure that we reduce and perhaps eliminate human rights abuses. And we do that by ensuring that our members can perform as effectively as they possibly can. Secondly, we're bringing together all of our member institutions to work on common issues. A lot of countries in the region have internal crises and the APF can do quite a lot of work, not only in training but also in providing uh, 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 advice. We've worked with our member institution in Afghanistan and the Afghan Commission has recently run a national inquiry on so-called honour killings. It's a criminal act, it's a violation of human rights of women. So we did this to break the silence and taboo in talking about these things. And some of the outcomes of that have included um, a review of the criminal code and that's something that we intend to do with other commissions through our ongoing training program on women and girls' human rights. In February of 2012, when the, when the change of government occurred, when, when there was a lot of political turmoil in the country, the APF was very quick to respond. Their constant contact with the Human Rights Commission was so pivotal because we weren't sure what was happening. We weren't sure what our role was. They can also be an important asset to us in developing the capacities of our staff in, uh, in, in conducting training uh, on uh, combating torture and prevention of torture. And on it we will bu uh, build our new campaign in Palestine. We chose to completely scrap the old Ombudsman's office and to start anew. And uh, the assistance we got from the APF in drawing up this piece of legislation was just amazing. Myanmar is in the midst of a democratization process and APF uh, supported us a lot and it contributed in the work of our commission. For example, drafting of our enabling law and for our strategic plan. It's not only capacity building as an institution, but also capacity building of the staff and individual staff in investigation, in conducting national inquiries, even in report writing. APF uh, is the prime mover of all human rights commissions in the, this region. I have to say that it is very good to be with the others and learn from the others. They always support us when we are in a very difficult situation. I think it speaks volumes for the way APF has been able to work and to get uh, a disparate group actually in Asia to work together. I think it's a monumental task that they've undertaken. It's an organization that is progressive because it is directed towards genuine reforms. And we need this kind of spirit, collective spirit, in addressing questions of injustice and impunity and inequity that goes on all over the world. We don't give up. I don't give up. And uh, most of my colleagues don't give up.